So Wanamu, it is, it is really great to see you. Um, we continue to uh, love you very much and pray for you and your family very much as well. And so um, we're very grateful for you for taking the time just to ha have a wee chat, Wanamu, today. Um, how are things going for you at the moment? Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's really great to be connected once again. And uh, technology has made uh, this possible to see face to face. Mm -hmm. It's not, it is really kind of uh, feeding in some emotional aspect as well. So I'm very happy that we are able to chat. Uh, to respond to your question, I am, I am doing well, regardless of uh, the challenge that we are facing. As you can see, I'm wearing face mask. Yes. Because of the contextual uh, challenge that we are facing at the moment. The COVID-19 case is uh, now getting worse and worse uh, in Ethiopia. So uh, in, in my office, I think uh, nearly uh, 70 to 75 percent of uh, my colleagues have been tested positive and uh, they are, um, thankfully, most of them are uh, recovering now uh, they have been under quarantine system and uh, uh, my own secretary is now back after 21 days of quarantine and uh, there are other friends from uh, you know near offices from missions department and other departments who have been under quarantine and they are back now in the midst of all that it's a miracle that the Lord has you know protected me so far i am okay i have always been going to office uh, except for the days that i uh, i travel for field ministry so uh it is a real miracle i can't imagine my two bosses immediate bosses have been tested positive we have worked closely with them with multiple uh responsibilities at the office and uh, over at the field so I don't know how the Lord protected me. My worry had have been, uh, you know, when I work closely with such people, I was always worried about getting caught with the virus and bring the virus to my home because my children are, you know, as you know, they are young. As soon as I get into our home, they jump over me. You know, they want to kiss me and chat with me. So always it has been a real concern you know that i would be a channel for these innocent kids to be affected by the virus but the lord has been good so far and uh, myself and my family we are all well in terms of health and uh, we are really thriving in terms of spiritual journey as well because this is a time that the lord has brought us closer to himself because we have nothing to rely on ex except for God's mercy and grace. So we, we pray, we read the scriptures, and uh, we worship the Lord. So I am very much grateful to the Lord. And uh, when we consider all that grace, I, I am mindful of your prayers. You know, that, that's how the Lord answers. And uh, by really stretching his arms to his children worldwide while we are, we are praying somewhere. So thank you very much for that. And we're, we're going to keep praying for you, Wanda Moo. For, for those that maybe, um, that maybe aren't familiar uh, with you and your family, particularly those who are maybe starting to come along to the church family of St. Andrews, your wife is Salam and you have four children, isn't that right? I have four uh, children. Uh, my firstborn is Bazalel. Second one is Ersami. Third one is Jonathan. Our final one is, I, I say, Charlie, uh -huh. her nickname. <laughs> her school name is not yet decided. She started, but they are, they are all at school and uh, mm -hmm. they're enjoying their, their, their classes, yeah. And the last time we chatted, uh, you had mentioned that a couple of your children had come to faith in Jesus Christ last year. Yes. And that was a real well, joy. Yeah. Praise God, yeah, my, my firstborn, uh, three of them have come to Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, my firstborn has made another significant progress this year. 
because uh, our church has been teaching him uh, uh, maybe in your context that would be called like confirmation class or membership classes yeah membership class or mm -hmm. confirmation class so uh, he has been taking that class over six months mm -hmm. and uh, in our church tradition after six months of that class then they are ready for baptism mm -hmm. so he have he was baptized uh, i think three four weeks ago unfortunately i was on a field assignment uh, i couldn't join that uh, wonderful moment but uh, I, I was with him in prayer so he's able to be baptized and now he is uh, attending what we call uh, progress to ministry class mm -hmm. now from now on he is a member of the church uh he will claim uh, uh some ministry opportunities when he finishes his training so that that is so encouraging to me and uh, I, th I think it is encouraging to you as well as you have been praying for our family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's brilliant news i'm really it's uh, such a joy to hear that wandamu um with all that you've been going through in ethiopia at this time when we hear reports obviously of the pandemic. Um, we also are hearing more and more reports of the conflict in, is it Tigray, in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Can you help yeah. us understand um, what it's like in Ethiopia at the moment and how you and the church and your family have been coping in the midst of these multiple challenges? Yeah, the pandemic is really serious and getting worse. Uh, uh, interestingly, the people outside of the capital city, uh, who, those who live in down country areas, have not really accepted that the virus is right, you know, next to their door. Uh, we have been traveling to different parts of the country for field assignment and wearing masks, trying to use sanitizers, you know, trying our best for, you know, precautions, but they were kind of laughing at us. Unfortunately, these days, all those areas where people even considered us as people, faceless people, you know, how, how do you think that you would uh, require us to close churches for the sake of safety and all that? They would have raised such, you know, questions. But nowadays, this afternoon, I was talking with one of uh, our beloved pastors where he is telling uh, two of his key church elders passed away and he has been tested positive his wife, wife and himself mm -hmm. after serious uh, medical help now he is in a hope in, in a good hope of recovery uh, he's still under quarantine so in many places now people are dying and uh, uh, churches are really in real fear now because they missed a, a good opportunity that they should have been careful when the government uh, is you know urging them to take serious action to take care of themselves so in terms of that pand pandemic we are not in a good situation uh, it's a real bad uh, situation in terms of the political unrest uh, you know the battle with the tigre uh, liberation front uh, has not been over the main the main war uh, seemed uh, you know to have finished in a short while but because this uh, liberation front has been uh, working through this tricky you know uh, strategy of uh, dividing the country and uh, perpetuating their power uh, over 30 years now when their agenda political interests failed then they established quite strong kind of army that would fight with the whole national army so the, the National Army uh, thought that they could have finished the war within a month or two, but it is still going on. The worst thing is uh, uh, these uh, people from Tigray Liberation Front uh, has stolen huge amount of money uh, from the whole country and used that money, you know, to entice people uh, to cause war between ethnic lines. So these days in central northern part of Ethiopia, central northern part of Ethiopia, we had terrible, terrible uh, uh, killings, you know, slaughtering people 
kind of uh, on ethnic line and religious lines. Uh, now they are under uh, emergency state situation. It is like uh, closer to 150 kilometers away from Addis Ababa now that has taken place. That means it is very close to you know, Addis Ababa and uh, Addis Ababa itself is in a tight security. Uh, every corner you go, you have to stop and uh, the police would check whether you have uh, you know, different weapons and all that. So uh, that's the situation at the moment. The Interreligious religious Council have declared a national fasting and prayer uh, time. Mm -hmm. Also the evangelical churches, including my own denomination, have declared uh, national fasting and prayer, prayer time because this war is terribly ugly because it is war between ethnic groups who used to live together in harmony for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, this is old situation that now we are passing through and uh, uh, the Lord knows why he has allowed such a terrible condition to such a poor nation. You know, we, we, we are under poverty line already. We should have come together, you know, seek the face of the Lord, work together to overcome this terrible situation. But Satan, you know, have devised this terrible political and ethnic conflict uh, in our midst. And uh, I don't know, we, we think who would be the next? What is the strategy, you know, who is in, in focus uh, to be attacked the next while? That is the kind of situation we are at. And uh, what happens with all that is uh, uh, movement of uh, essential commodities has been deterred. Manufacturing organizations, uh, I, I mean factories have been uh, affected. Even the farming center is not uh, as active as it, it should be. So the supply level of uh, you know, foodstuffs and all necessary uh, things uh, for the, our livelihood is under scarcity. So uh, we are really praying for divine intervention that uh, we, would, uh, we would see a settled nation where uh, peace prevails and justice prevails. Uh, that's where we are. And the, another critical thing that we are hoping for in the near future is uh, at the end of uh, uh, May in our calendar, or the first week of your June, we are holding national election. Mm -hmm. We are hoping that uh, if, if that national election goes uh, democratically and peacefully, uh, we would anticipate something of a change to happen in the country because uh, the existing government took over the position from TPLF, the Tigray Liberation Front, who has been leading us over 30 years. Now the transition was not smooth. It, it, it is after huge battle and turmoil that the existing prime minister took over the position. Now this prime minister is born again evangelical believer. And uh, we are hoping that in his days that Ethiopia would see something of betterment and uh, equality, democracy and all that. But uh, these guys devised, you know, uh, terrible condition that uh, forced him to use the military because one of the ugly things the, the Tigray Liberation Front did was they attacked the a, a, you know military base of uh, northern region. Uh, they murdered, killed, and uh, took over all the weapons. And it is terrible. It is maybe it has not recorded such a terrible thing in world history. I think uh, when it is written openly, maybe the world will know later. So that forced this innocent prime minister to use force to stop all that in, by, by the name of law enforcement. It is really bad for evangelical prime minister that we have once in our history to face such a terrible condition. But anyway, he has no choice other than going that direction. And we are still holding uh, this election in coming early June. So we are praying for that, that uh, the new government would have the strength to revitalize our constitution who, who that has been the cause of all this you know terrible conflict between ethnic groups religious groups political groups and all that so 
we are looking forward to something very important in the history of Ethiopia. And uh, I don't know whether this conflict that is bursting everywhere would mm -hmm. allow us to hold that election or that or not. Mm -hmm. And are you finding, um, Wandamu, that the, the unrest that has been caused in the aftermath of what has been happening in the Tigray region, it, are you seeing this unrest bubble up in, right across the country or in Addis Ababa where you are? Yeah, it is bubbling, bubbling up everywhere because these guys have all the capacity to really agitate people, giving money, giving weapons giving ideas, and uh, they use money, ethnic lines, and some of, you know, interest, political interest, to, uh, you know, accomplish their agenda. So, for instance, if they carry this agenda around Bangar area today, then you try to calm down that problem from Bangar area, the next morning they might go to Belfast area. Hmm. You never know where they would, you know, uh, carry their agenda. So. Uh, the, it is not too far from us, from Addis now, where they, are, they have created that problem. And we don't know where the next agenda would burst, uh, uh, you know, unless God intervenes. We believe that God will really intervene in this. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you, fa you face a situation at the moment, Wandamu, with the escalating pandemic in Ethiopia and, and obviously the the conflict situation within the country as well, the unrest that that's causing, the security issues that that is causing, and there's, there's bound to be an inflation aspect and the challenge of getting food and resources. How is all of that impacting your work and ministry day by day and also the church in Ethiopia too? Yeah, uh, those of us who are you know, committed to full-time ministry are really facing challenge now because the church is not in a position to support us uh, because everywhere the church is, you know, under the pressure of the pandemic, the war, the economic, you know, deteriorating economic situation. So we, we are not expecting, you know, them to be, you know, that generous to us because they, everybody is in a kind of need situation. So it is quite stretching in, in, to, to those of us who are working in that position. Particularly in our office, you know, we are responsible to look after many, many things, you know, uh, while the whole country is passing through this difficulty, we have to be there everywhere to comfort people, to strengthen the church, uh, uh, you know, to show God's agenda you know, God's agenda uh, comes beyond what we are facing at the moment. So that aspect of leadership has to be provided to our people. So we travel, uh, you know, we train, we visit people, encourage leadership to uh, come closer to uh, our members. And uh, even we work with the government at this critical moment, uh, you know, to uh, be strong and wise to uh, lead this nation, you know, to the next phase. All that requires something of financial capacity and also, you know, the power of the spirit more than anything else. Mm. So uh, we are in that kind of stretching situation, but uh, we are not hopeless. Uh, uh, you know, we believe that we have to endure until the last moment of our breath since we are called by the lord to lead you know the church and these dark days test our leadership uh, you know skills and also our commitment to the lord and his church so on my part i am trying to play whatever i can to be that person the lord and his people want me to to be but it doesn't mean that i'm not paying the cost the price is very high. Uh, at times, you, you can't imagine in my level to, to starve at times. You know, that, that's one of the challenges we face because uh, we have no one to see there. But uh, the Lord has been faithful, you know, the, in, in these terrible days. We have gone um, many, many directions. And the Lord, the Lord has given me to become an encouragement to our college, Bible schools, 
uh, for instance, recently, I think it is uh, a month and a half, we, we, ha we had a meeting where we revised our Bible school curriculum for five years. You know, this is another hope. You know, in the coming five years, there will be ministry, there will be the Lord, the church will continue. Therefore, we need to have something strong to lead our Bible school ministry. And also we have visited our uh, 14 colleagues uh, two, two weeks ago with uh, a recently appointed uh, college ministry coordinator under my department uh, uh, supervision. We, we had a wonderful time with our college administrators. We encouraged students, you know, we trained, you know, our students preached everywhere we went to churches you know we bring hope to the people who are living in a kind of dark situation so all that is with sacrifice but amazingly the lord has been with us that is so encouraging to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. and the, the 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 colleges i think are there 14 colleges and 157 bible schools that you help to oversee um Wandamu, is that right? Yes, that's the, the number. Are, are they still open at the moment? And are students still able to meet in person? Or like many yeah, of they, us? Uh, the, most of them are open uh, at the moment because our government uh, uh, required us to close schools until uh, September or beginning of October 2020. Mm -hmm. And after that, the government decided that we have to use all the safety measures, but still carry on our regular, you know, school activities. I think that is a wise decision. And so far our schools are open and colleges are open, but we do all the, you know, safety measures tightly in our colleges and Bible schools. And so far we do not have reports of, uh, days or serious you know infection with the virus from our bible schools or college we are very much grateful to the lord for that and how wandamu have you been finding it as a christian leader to lead in this very difficult time i mean how have you personally found it it is very challenging mm -hmm. but one aspect that uh I, I am very much encouraged is the Lord has given me uh, more time to focus on prayer in these years. Uh, I mean, uh, since the COVID-19 days, the Lord has really blessed us with prayer. Uh, we have national prayer and fasting uh, program revitalized, and we have all, you know, structural offices down to the local church level we have organized prayer teams to the extent of every family to focus in prayer so that has been really a blessing that the lord has uh, given to us and uh, interestingly I, I i thank the lord i am the leader of that prayer ministry in the country besides my responsibility under theological education department Mm -hmm. Even uh, this weekend, last uh, last Thursday, we started last Thursday afternoon and finished mm -hmm. Sunday afternoon. We had fasting and prayer time. It was a wonderful time that the Lord has been speaking to us and we have been very much strengthened. And uh, again, this special prayer and fasting is still going on. We had fasting this today as well this morning and this afternoon so i think in the midst of really challenging leadership responsibility i think the lord has blessed us with this ministry of prayer so that we would allow the lord really to take the leadership and us follow him uh, otherwise we could have not survived so far in my understanding mm -hmm. And, and how, how is the church um, at the moment, um, Wanda Moo, I mean, here in Northern Ireland, um, we're beginning to gradually come out of a very tight lockdown during January, February and March. And so 
we haven't been able to meet together in person for quite a while. Um, but from Easter Sunday, we've begun to be able to meet in person for worship gatherings, albeit with two meters distancing and the wearing of face masks. And hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll be able to meet for prayer together in person and Bible study as well. It has been a real challenge. I'm not that difficulty in having fellowship together in person. We've really missed that. Um, yeah. But how, how has the church, how has your church family been coping in the midst of the pandemic and then also with the unrest as well? Yeah, as I told you earlier, here in Addis Ababa, the churches were closed mm -hmm. since uh, uh, March 2000, uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, that continued up until uh, September 2020. Mm -hmm. After that, churches gradually started meeting together again. For a month or two, we, we kind of use shift, you know, for instance, 200 people worship from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Then 200 people come after that for an hour and a half kind of shift. We, we use that. Mm -hmm. Finally, gradually, you know, Ethiopians are kind of, you know, family oriented people. So they couldn't cope with that kind of style. They all joined the worship session. And at the moment, everywhere, people are following the usual pattern. Even though the government is saying this is risky uh, for the church to follow, the church has to close, you know, the, its uh, uh, buildings. But church leaders and members are not really uh, happy and accepting that uh, regulation of the government. So everywhere the church is meeting together. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that uh, we observe regarding this, uh, uh, the progress issue is there is the negative side with this pandemic. Uh, the negative side is our national evangelists we call national evangelists, they are cross-cultural missionaries within Ethiopia. Uh, some of our national evangelists are forced to go back to their sending churches for two reasons. One, the pandemic itself has been a threat uh, that forces them to go to their family areas. Second, their churches are not capable of supporting them as usual. So, those both reasons forced uh, many cross-cultural missionaries to go back to their homes. Uh, in locally, where the, we have established churches, even where we have emerging churches, this pandemic has brought them together very much. They are praying together, studying the scripture together, even though they are not as free as to, uh, to enjoy visiting one another, staying you know, at homes of uh, different families that has not been that my relaxing but in at church level they are meeting together uh, even they are not that much mindful of the distancing and safety issue in down country areas so it is kind of mixed we have productive unity strong preaching and teaching going on in established church areas Yet in unreached areas, our evangelists are compelled to leave, which is kind of uh, the battle be is becoming that coronavirus is, a, you know, a channel of Satan to affect the, the expansion of God's kingdom in that regard. Uh, because outreach ministry is now hindered because of this pandemic. And also the war that we are suffering with has been another deterrent to the expansion of of, of God's kingdom. So that's the kind of mixed situation we are at at the moment. The spiritual battle is deeply intense at the moment, Wanda yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that is, you know, the, the case in your context. You know, we feel that battle, you know, uh, it's not mere uh, health issue. It is an issue that uh, stops, you know, the ex expansion of being, uh, God's kingdom. It is affecting discipleship unless you meet with one another share the love that Christ has shared with us. It is an issue with discipleship. It is an issue with Christian influence. 
So as leaders, we are facing all that, and uh, that's why we are focusing in prayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the midst of the intensity of that spiritual battle and the challenges that you've outlined, and as you get down on your knees and pray and fast, have you a sense of what God is saying to you? And, and can you also see him at work in different ways as well in the midst of this very difficult time? Yeah, the, the recurring message that we are hearing from the scriptures and uh, from various sources, you know, at times such as this, there, there are voices from different angles. And uh, all of that, I gather, write, follow up, compare and contrast with what the text says. All of that is say, saying that the Lord would give the church the courage and strength, strength to face this challenge and come out of it uh, gradually. That is, that is the, the kind of message we are hearing. And the uh, practical, practical side of that is people, every corner, are not hopeless. It's so amazing. Everywhere you go, people are not hopeless. They are still passionate about contributing something. It is kind of sensing the transient nature of the day. We feel that in our context. I don't know if that is mm-hmm. uh, similar in, in your setting. Mm-hmm. People are kind of realizing that this world is just, you know, it is not a you know, lasting world. We are only here for a short while. So we have to be mindful of the short days and use that opportunity to do whatever we can uh, for the glory of the Lord. That sense of passion and commitment is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when I see that practical aspect with the recurring message that I'm hearing from different sources, I think that is something of God. It gives me the confirmation. God is really speaking this, and we have to, you know, look forward for that day that he would give us really Mm-hmm. Some relief. Mm-hmm. Amen. I want to make higher things going, obviously, in Belegala, the school in Belegala, and all the ministry work that's happening in Belegala is close uh, to our hearts in St Andrews as well. Higher things going in that region and in, in the school there as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I was able to visit them maybe two months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an occasion where my older brothers, two sons, graduated from two different universities. And uh, my brother invited me to kind of join a Thanksgiving program uh, he you know, prepared as a family. So I went there and uh, I was able to meet almost the whole members of the congregation. And I visited the church as well. Uh, the church is very vibrant and alive. Uh, that was so so you know encouraging to me, and uh, I was grateful to the Lord. And uh, the church elders and the pastors are working very much closely because this is very critical time for them. So it is uh, kind of thriving and uh, growing church at the moment. Uh, but the school, the, the children's school, is not functional at the moment because they are, they are not feeling free to send children uh, to attend the classes because of the news that they are hearing about coronavirus and uh, the way it you know, uh, spreads. But what they have done is they have uh, built another uh, kind of building next to the one i have sent you the picture Mm -hmm, Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so they have uh, with the fund that was you know sent to them they constructed another building and uh, they are hoping that the coronavirus case would you know would would be solved and then the children would be back to these classrooms and uh, they would kind of increase the number of classes that children would, would, would continue their studies. So that's where they are at. Uh, they are very strong in terms of pastoral care. They are very strong in terms of local missions. Mm-hmm. 
but they are not attempting to go outside of the locality because of the pressure of the coronavirus and all that. Mm -hmm. At the moment, they are kind of struggling because the rain has been delayed. Uh, in Ethiopia, we depend upon the seasonal rain. So uh, this season, we were expecting the rain to come around early March, but uh, it has not yet come. Mm -hmm. That means one season of harvest would be again intervened and that affects their life during the summer. So that's one of the concerns we are at. Otherwise they are doing well. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, how I, was, I was thinking of taking uh, photos and all that but uh, sadly my uh, mobile camera was really poor mm -hmm. so it didn't it did help me to get the pictures of those the new building and uh, i am still hoping that i would visit them with a good camera and mm -hmm. catch up something that mm -hmm. i would send uh, to you but please please don't don't worry don't feel under any pressure um wonder me how is the ocs at the moment ocs is uh, here in addis uh -huh. and uh, uh in as i shared with my previous uh, uh, report mm -hmm. uh, his mom came from uh, the, the Arab world she used to work there mm -hmm. because of the coronavirus pressure mm -hmm. and unfortunately she couldn't go back mm -hmm. on the one hand that is sad that she couldn't continue her work on the other hand that is really great that she is able to live with her children mm -hmm. Yosias and his older two sisters are here in Addis studying. They are doing well. Uh, actually, Yosias' uh, sisters are member of our choir, okay. my local church's choir. Mm -hmm. Yosias is a good uh, student, and uh, he he is you know a friend of my older son. They attend you know similar classes together. Mm -hmm. So uh, Yosias is really in in, in a good progress. So uh, they are happy family. Uh, because he is with his mom and uh, the support that you sent to them has been very much helpful for his schooling and mm -hmm. covering some of uh, his fees so mm -hmm. they are very much uh, enjoying themselves mm -hmm. the road has been good to them and uh, I'm, I'm very happy even seeing his physical progress he's making fast progress mm -hmm. good how how can we as a church family continue to support you and your family and the church in Ethiopia, um, Belegala, the folks in Belegala, and also AOCS. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I value your prayers. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is because of your prayers that the Lord has kept us safe and kept the ministry flowing, you know, as natural. Uh, in a natural way in the midst of this terrible situation. So I really appreciate your prayers and encourage you to continue to support us in your prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the second aspect is uh, I would appreciate, you know, if St. Andrew's family could continue to supporting us uh, financially. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put pressure, you know, on St. Andrew's family, but as the Holy Spirit leads, you know, uh, the whole family of St. Andrews know that I have not chosen to take the path that most African students have taken. I, w I have never been insistent to get financial support at all. And uh, that doesn't give me joy. The thing that gives me joy is if I could work with my own hands and you know, get the blessings of the Lord. But when contextual matters, you know, uh, deter that, when you do your best uh, to support yourself, to support your ministry, then I think it is worth sharing to like-minded people like you and the family of St. Andrews, because I consider myself one of the members of the family. So, if possible, and if that is God's direction, I would appreciate financial support as well. Uh, otherwise, I really focus on prayer. Uh, God knows 
how, how he leads his people. So I depend upon him and I encourage the church in Bilagala and the family of Iosias, you know, uh, to depend upon the Lord. Whenever I hand over the donation that comes to them, I have always reminded them that they should not really anticipate the second donation to come. That is up to the Lord, you know, to move his people, to bless his people so that his people will, could share. Otherwise, we should open our eyes and see the Lord. So that's, that's my philosophy of leading life. So I share that because I know you understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, as we continue to provide prayer support as well as financial support, specifically prayer, um, want to make, what are the key sort of the key prayer items that we should be constantly holding on to in prayer as we remember you and your family, the church, the ministry work that you're involved in, your nation as well? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. One essential prayer item is pray that the Lord would give me the wisdom and the strength to finish my paper. Mm -hmm. Now I am uh, on my chapter seven, where is uh, my, that is my data analysis chapter. If I finish that one, the next one would be recommendation and a uh, few things uh, related to conclusion. So that means I am at the peak of my research. Even though the due date, uh, university, of Middlesex has extended my due date to 2023, but I want to really finish in 2022. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, this research has been kind of imprisoned me. Uh, I couldn't get the freedom of sacrificing my whole being to the ministry because it is kind of choking my whole being everywhere I go. Uh, so. Uh, I want to be liberated from this burden. Uh, I know the Lord has been teaching me a lot through this research. And I know uh, the Lord has entrusted in me something that I can carry the rest of my life. That you should be really joining me with thanks because you have sacrificed a lot as a family uh, in supporting me. It is worthwhile to invest my life in this project. But I want to be free now. Uh, my inner being is really trying to, to get the freedom finishing uh, well. So I appreciate your prayers on that line. The second prayer is uh, I want God's wisdom uh, uh, in my ministry so that I would be able to really uh, provide good leadership where I am uh, situated. Uh, particularly my denominational context is really challenging. We pass through tough church politics. So in the midst of po church politics, pray that the Lord would give me the grace to continue to be a godly model, that the erosion of church politics would not touch me. I, <laughs> that is an area, a very sensitive area, uh, I know the friends, the friends of mine have been eroded by church politics, lost their spiritual quality, really undermined their call. And I don't want to see that kind of thing to happen in my life. I want to stick to my call. I want to be as vibrant as I used to be. So I appreciate your prayers in that direction. Mm -hmm. And the other prayer item is praise that the church would continue to uh, commit itself to the Great Commission and uh, to look after you know its uh, congregations and members who are passing through these difficult days that we as leaders can be uh, good leaders who show direction and help God's people pass through this difficulty in a godly manner. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is pray for Bilagala Church because it is uh, kind of situated in a uh, battlefront because in right uh, next door we have a uh, tough uh, movement of fundamental Islam you know that has been pushing forward but the church is still strong and uh, the, the power is still in the church but we never know 
So we need the work of the Holy Spirit to be, uh, you know, with the church so that the church would prevail and penetrate to the ter territories of uh, Muslims. So I appreciate for that. And finally, uh, I appreciate for uh, supporting us in prayer that Ethiopia would get lasting peace. Uh, as I told you earlier, we have been, you know, under poverty line for ages. And we need a relief, really, a time of relief. It is very sad why we have been targeted with war, famine, all sorts of problems. I don't know why. Uh, this is an area where our theology is tested. Even our depth of biblical understanding is te tested. Why on earth is such a poor people targeted to be victims of all sorts of battles? For instance, uh, the battle between Ethiopia and its neighbors, Egypt, for instance, there is the hand of, you know, uh, uh, big nations like the United States. You know, why is it such a big nation stretching it is tough hands upon such a poor nation? Mm -hmm. That kind of, uh, you know, questions are hard to explain. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian, I, I want to really uh, kindly ask you to pray that the Lord would give us lasting peace. Mm -hmm. We need peace. We don't really worry about wealth. We need peace. Peace is far important than wealth. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the prayer items I want to share with you. And uh, thank you very much uh, for giving this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am still, yeah, yeah, I am still hoping that the borders of the UK would be open. Uh, for me to come over to Oxford and uh, by way of Oxford, that the Lord would give me a time that we would meet again as a family. That would be wonderful, Wanda Mu, we can't wait for that. Um, can, I, can I pray for you now, Wanda Mu? And, Please. Um, and if you felt able to pray for us, we would greatly appreciate that as well. Um, so if I pray for you now, and uh, we'll commit you and your family and the church and all that you've mentioned uh, to God in prayer. Yeah. Loving Heavenly Father, you are sovereign. You are in control. We praise you and thank you for who you are. And we continue to praise and thank you for Jesus, your son. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his resurrection. We thank you that our Savior Jesus is alive and he is coming again soon. Mm. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is at work in us. Even in these dark and challenging days, Lord, your Spirit is at work doing a refining work in our hearts, molding and shaping us more and more into the likeness of Jesus, your Son. Yes. Um, Lord, you call us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and to follow you. And Lord, we acknowledge that at times that is so desperately difficult. Mm -hmm. And as I listen to my brother, Wanda Mu, we're so thankful for him. We're so thankful that Jesus and is so clearly his saviour and that your spirit is so clearly at work in him day by day. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Father, that as Wanda Mu denies himself and takes up his cross and follows you, I pray that you will continue to provide for his every need and his family's every need. Father, thank you for your hand of protection over them at this time when the pandemic is escalating in Ethiopia. And we pray that you will continue to keep them safe. We pray, Father, for Wanda Mu's wife and beautiful children. We pray and thank you for Basilal and the joy of um, the baptism that happened. And pray for Basilal, Lord, as, uh, as they continue to uh, work through membership classes, Lord, at this time. Father, just encourage Wandamu and his family in these days. Help them to keep their focus firmly fixed on you and continue to provide, Lord, for their every need, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, Lord, as well. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray for Wandamu as he continues to finish his research and finish this paper in this academic qualification that he is striving for at the moment. We thank you for all that you have been teaching him through it. But Lord, the time is coming where this now needs to come to an end so that he can be free of that and begin to put into practice what he has been learning. So we pray for real discipline in the days to come. We pray for your hand upon him, Father, 
that you'll give him the words to write. You'll enable him to finish well in this thesis, Father, and that he will receive the qualification that is needed, Father. Uh, we just pray, Father, that the time will come soon where this academic uh, work will come to an end, Father. We pray also for your wisdom to be given to uh, Wandamu as he continues to provide good leadership in the church. In the midst of the church politics that is happening at the moment, and indeed in the midst of the many different challenges of leadership in the church in this time of the pandemic and the conflict as well, we pray that Wandamu will continue to look to Christ, your son, yes. and that you will give him much grace and wisdom as he seeks to lead others in a way that brings glory and honor to Jesus. Father, help him to remain vibrant and passionate for Christ. And Father, will you equip your servant for every good work that you have planned for him. Father, we pray that the church as a whole, both in Ethiopia and indeed here in Northern Ireland and the wider world, will continue to remain faithful to the great commission that Jesus called us to, that we would continue to go out into all the world and make and grow disciples with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, help mm -hmm. us in all of that. Help Wandamu as he helps to lead in that as well. And we also pray for our brothers and sisters in the church in Belegala. We thank you for the work of your spirit in that church family. We thank you for the vibrancy of the church. And in an area where there is an increasing, um, an increasing rise of fundamentalist Islamic uh, folks who seek to push against um, your people, Lord, we just pray for courage and for strength mm -hmm. for your people, that they would continue to rise up and proclaim the good news of Jesus with much grace and much love. Father, help us yes. to continue to lift our brothers and sisters in prayer. Mm -hmm. And Father, for the nation of Ethiopia, Father, we pray that you will pour out your spirit across the nation in these days. Mm. We pray for lasting peace. We pray for conflict and unrest to end. We pray, Father, for the good news of Jesus to be proclaimed far and wide. We pray for your church to continue to rise up, to point others to Jesus. We pray for the elections coming up in early June. And Father, we pray for your peace to descend upon this nation and for you to provide for their every need. Lord, we're so thankful for Wandamu and for his family and for your church in Ethiopia. Father, we count it a privilege to journey alongside them. Father, we pray that you will help us as your church here in Bangor to do all that we can to love and care, to pray and support in other ways Wandamu and his family and your church in Ethiopia in these days. And we ask, Lord, according to your will, that your kingdom would continue to come in Ethiopia as it is in heaven. We pray these things in the precious and saving name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for this wonderful opportunity to be able to meet through technology, Lord. We know you are the source of all the wisdom that you have blessed us, your people, even with technology, that we can use every opportunity to expand your kingdom, to come together as your children, share gifts that you have entrusted to us, and become blessing to one another. Lord, we pray that St. Andrew's family would continue to be united in love, committed to you, and uh, devoted to the service of your kingdom, and that they would be all protected by your hand, uh, regardless of the threats from the pandemic and anything else that would try to attack your people. I pray that your hands would be upon each one of this family, that you would continue to bless them, and you would continue to use them to the spread of the gospel. As they plan to renew, re renovate the church building, Lord, I ask you to provide all their needs, give them the wisdom, and also bless them with people who are gifted and passionate uh, to share their gifts, to really contribute to the renovation of this building. And we ask that 
every program that is going on in St. Andrews would be led by your spirit, that you would bless them with vision and bless them with incredible love that comes from the cross of your son, Jesus Christ. As we continue to work together, Lord, help us to grow mature uh, in Christ. Help us to see things from your perspective and help us not to waste even a minute or second in anything unworthy, but sacrifice our whole being to your glory. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, Wanda, we thank so much for your prayers and uh, for your time today. We just really appreciate seeing you and hearing from you. It helps us to remain focused on praying for you and continuing to support you in your ministry. Um, if you had one final message to share with the church family in St. Andrews that loves you so very much, what, what would that be, Wanda? Mu? Well, I am uh, very much uh, blessed by having this uh, wonderful time with you, and uh, I'm grateful to the Lord that you know everybody in St. Andrews is doing well. That is very much uh, you know heart uh, warming to me. Uh, I haven't uh, received uh, heartbreaking news from St. Andrews this uh, year, so that is very encouraging to me. Uh, so I continue to pray that uh, the Lord's leadership and blessing will, will be with each one of you or every one of you. But I want to leave with a verse that has been very close to me these days. It is uh, from Isaiah chapter one, verse nine reads uh, the King James version is in my hand at the moment. So it reads, uh, uh, except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. And I think it is very clear. The context is not that encouraging. As preachers, we know the context. But one thing that came to my heart, you know, these days as we have been praying, uh, suffering will continue as the, the impact of fallenness continues. As the craft of Satan continues, suffering will continue. But there is a hope for us who believe in the Lord. And this verse reminds us that Israel is going to be judged. Even Judah, the beloved people of God in Judah, is going to be punished because of their sin, because of sin related things that would come, but remnants would survive regardless of this. So God is saying to me, Wendemu, would you choose to be one of the remnants or would you take it things easy and easily eroded by the things that come and pass? Where would you locate yourself? Be wise to locate yourself with the remnants. Now, being part of the remnant requires a lot from us as chosen children and servants of the Lord. So I want to really encourage my friends in St. Andrews to be serious about the aspects that would preserve us remnants of the Lord. We know that the Lord keep us safe because of his covenant. There is no doubt about it. But as a as covenant people, we have our own responsibility to be faithful, to play the roles that are expected from remnants. That is to abide in the covenant, to behave like children and father with the Lord, to choose to lead a life of righteousness, justice, and also to be a living sacrifice in the altar of the Lord. As remnants. So I encourage my, you know, family members there in St. Andrews to have that quality preserved in our lives. We never know when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Maybe the world is in agony. The signs 
and signals are closer to our ears and our eyes. If we are within the remnants, it's about to dawn to us. Christ is coming very close. I'm not emotional in this. I'm basing my, <laughs> my uh, thoughts on the scriptures. So I really encourage my brothers, sisters, my moms and dads in St. Andrews to take this verse seriously. And I appreciate you to really use your own talent to make this verse sweet and communicate this plea from my heart to the family of St. Andrews. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wanamu. It's a joy to be with you and uh, we will continue to pray for you and support you and cheer you on um, for you and your family and for the church in Ethiopia at this time. Thank you for your time today. God bless you. Thank you and extend, please extend my greetings to my friends there and uh, I will try to write to you as, you know, time allows. I'm a sure. very poor writer, so you would bear with me in that aspect. Totally, totally. Thank you, Wandamu. God bless you. Bye-bye, Mark. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Cheerio.